So when you look at the chart of AMC here, both on the one day, but also on the six month, and realistically even on the one year, this one does it like a dead play, right? And we're hearing loads of people trying to tell us that this is a dead play, but why I want to compare is a scenario that we find ourselves in with AMC, and something that we will, of course, already know by the thumbnail of this video. That is Volkswagen, because bear in mind, Volkswagen went from about $200 trading price in about August to October of 08, and then it went up to the, these high prices. So it doubled in value, basically, and of course, from that doubling in value, it came back down. People who bought in, you know, here and then came to this point were probably thinking, oh, well, I could have taken big profits, and then guess what happened? It went up even more but it came back down to those base levels before it did go on to do that now i'm not here to tell you guys that amc is the next volkswagen i'm not here to tell you guys that this stock is going to see a massive short squeeze of course you know what my personal opinions are but do remember as always this is my opinion it is not financial advice you should do your own research and come to your own conclusions before investing or trading any stock and i must reiterate that before we jump in but yeah do subscribe if you can because we are trying to grow the channel and if you can help get this video out it would be fantastic because this is going to be a good one. Anyway, so let's jump in now. For this to make that real sense, what I want to do is just go into the chart with AMC and just quickly highlight the trend over the past few months. Like I said, we're going to just zoom out to the one or two year chart, uh, probably even longer than that on the five year chart because now we can see this rise looks even more steep and stark and again, on this wider time frame we can kind of compare this to what we saw back in the October period of 08 with Volkswagen. You know, we had that massive rise up, as you will see, um, definitely coming back to where we have higher than where we have been even in the past couple of years, which is a good thing. But obviously from there, now we're coming back down. And this has a lot of people wondering, where do we go with AMC? And as far as the fundamentals for a short squeeze go, nothing has changed. Of course, in Volkswagen's instance, there were a few things that set it off. So what I want to do now is look at what kind of caused the Volkswagen incident, then talk about what we could be expecting and how we can translate that into AMC. So for this, I've got, well, I found a really good piece of DD if we have a look at it. It's coming from Mr. Gamma Squeeze. It's posted 221 days ago. Now, this speaks about the fundamentals of AMC and why the squeeze could be even bigger than Volkswagen and back in 08. Um, but yeah, with a time frame being 200 plus days ago some of the things that we didn't know in this article we do now know now so i am going to give you an updated version based on the facts that we have now which we may not have had back then so it says i said it before and i say it again you can compare volkswagen in 2008 to where amc is in 21 also now in 22 but there are some remarkable differences that every ape needs to understand. Very important, yes, there are differences. And to understand those differences, let's go over the most important ingredients of a short squeeze point by point. So how hard was Volkswagen shorted compared to AMC? It had about 12% of shares being uh, shorted at the time. And AMC at the time was exceeding more than 20%. And again, um, now it is still at those levels around 20, but it is important to note this is not counting the potential of naked synthetic shares out there, which at the time were speculated to be around 100 million, but we know more buying pressure has come in, and we've actually seen reports now that synthetics could be uh, in the values of hundreds of millions, if not billions, if not tens of billions, so who knows how many synthetics are out there if they do exist, but yeah... If we think about those sorts of figures, it could be a lot higher than the reported 20%. But let's just say, for example, it's at 20%. It's still way higher than Volkswagen, uh, almost double, so that is noteworthy. So, um, how much of Volkswagen was owned by Porsche, the squeezer of Volkswagen, the one who caused it to happen? Only about 75% of Volkswagen shares were owned by Porsche. On its own... Not enough to squeeze when only 12% were shorted. Again, compared to AMC, we have about 80. Again, now it's moved up to be about 90% of the shares owned by the ape community. And again, uh, as this user does post, it's probably closer to 90. And that has actually came out to be the case. But on top of that, just remember, if those synthetics are out there, which is entirely possible, apes could actually own more than 100% of the float. So that is a noteworthy thing to speak about. And it says down here, and this was exactly the limiting factor to the Volkswagen short squeeze. Owning only 75% of all shares, Porsche could not squeeze Volkswagen on its own. 
they needed a big institutional share buyer or multiple, which was a reason for which was mainly the state of Nidusern something like that uh, to go along. Now get this into your ape head. The only reason why Volkswagen didn't go much higher than the price it did was the fact that Porsche didn't own enough shares to do so on its own. And this was the exact reason why Volkswagen only reached a price of about 1000 per share, which is equivalent to about 1.8, 1.4k USD in today's purchasing power. The threat of other institutional investors selling their shares limited the extent of the short squeeze. And uh, to touch on that point before, we know a simple supply demand, right? Obviously with the apes it's a lot easier than it is with banks and hedge funds and institutions because those uh, sorts of people and companies are trying to get the best for their investors and themselves, whereas apes, as a community, we do seem to be united, and therefore it does kind of remove that level of competitiveness. Yes, of course, institutions are in AMC, but really, the majority of people are apes, and subsequently, I think that is a big deal, because again, with that competitive nature being gone, everybody is all fighting for the same goal, and if we don't sell, the price must go higher and higher. Do remember that one as well. Now it says, let's have a look at AMC and who else is in the squeeze game. The answer is simple. Not really anybody else. Yes, it's just the apes. Have a look at this screenshot showing the largest institutional buyers. Again, this is um, quite some time ago. However, it's still true in my opinion. It's not going to be big enough to stock the squeeze or limit it by too much. That's just my approach and the way that I see it. You guys may have a different opinion, but that is my personal view. I do agree with that one. Now you have to know index funds can't just sell as they wish to. They are required and fixed down by rules and regulations to hold a certain amount of underlying stocks of their index funds. Thus, we only need to check how many shares are managed by other hedge funds which are not index funds. By the way, index funds may accelerate the squeeze because they need to hold and and even buy a certain amount of stock as their index goes on for instance the price of the company goes up and subsequently the index goes up disproportionately so you get what's trying to say they may have to balance that sort of thing there you go it says down here here is how much of those institutional shares are stuck up in index funds now we had vanguard at the time which was 35 million again these figures are somewhat irrelevant nowadays because whilst they are still big and they were at the time i think this data has changed but it does still tell us about the basis you know not too much really but it does tell us, uh, you know, in our ape's head, it's not really too large. And, of course, all AMC shares could be sold by institutional investors during the short squeeze. But it's not really going to have the biggest impact, in my opinion. So do the maths, right? If apes own 80 or more percent of the float and 12% are the 12 of all shares are invested in index funds, hedges will never be able to cover their shorts, which are 20% of all shares. Possibly more again. So, uh, the ratio here from available shares to short is about 2.5, which means 25 for 25 shares shorter, they will only find 10 on the market. And that's not unbelievable, is it? Again, this is assuming that those 7.94% could sell during the squeeze, but this may not be the case. If some of them or all of them are managed passively, i.e. they are stuck in some index funds, there are even zero shares left for hedges to cover the shorts. Too long didn't read. It basically summarises by saying, So apes run the show, this time. Unlike Porsche, apes are not going to settle for low prices. They can ask any price, again, if they do stick together. So when people say 10k, 100k, 600k, whatever, it's not necessarily impossible. And I do really agree with a lot of that sentiment you know when it comes to the highs of this stock i don't think everybody is going to get the top end i think it's inevitable that some are going to sell early late etc it doesn't matter as long as we are all fighting for the same cause i've said it before i actually do think it is best to have our individual plans we can all buy the stock but really when the stock's done when the short squeeze happens etc i think we all want to see different things in our personal lives i think we all have different investment strategies and that is not a bad thing at all we should look at this one in a different way you know we can hold together and of course we can sell together if we wish to do so but what i'm just trying to say is 
I know what my plan is going to be. I recommend that you guys have a plan too. Of course, come to your own conclusions, make up your own minds, as this is not financial advice, it is only opinion related. But I hope that it was a good, useful video to, ho to hopefully get the message out there and talk about where we are with AMC and where we're going into the future and what we have to look forward to based on prior events in the past. Again, if you do agree, smash the like button, share the video. But I will be back in a bit with you guys for another episode, so see you soon. Well, thank you for watching through till the end, but let me tell you about our Discord. So on your screen you will be seeing the N2S Finance Discord, obviously it is split into multiple sections, basically at the top we have updates from me and all that kind of good stuff, if you scroll down a bit further we have the main sections where we focus on cryptos, SPACs and other hot stocks including penny stocks, even stable growth stocks as well and we even have a special AMC GME chat. If you scroll down you can see some research and DD from the community, we also have funny memes and you can see actual contributions from many members down here and again if you do join us it is a completely free link is down below but if you do want to become a patreon you will actually get a pink uh, sticker which will be displayed on your name so your name will come up in pink as mine comes up in red down here and that will show that you are a patreon but other than that guys you can join completely for free down below you do not have to pay anything if you do not want to thank you for watching see you soon